With war restricting the import of medicines to Australia, the government establishes the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories to produce vaccines, serums and antitoxins. Returning soldiers carry the Spanish flu, infecting a third of the world's population and killing more than 50 million people. When the flu arrives in Australia, there's panic on the streets. But CSL goes into overdrive, producing a vaccine that delivers on her promise to protect the health of the Australian people. The experience leaves an indelible mark on the culture of the organisation and affirms the government's investment. Within just a few short years, CSL's production expertise is recognised internationally. When insulin is proven as a treatment for diabetes, only four organisations around the world are trusted with the production rights. CSL is one of them. Providing rapid access to the latest medical discoveries becomes a defining characteristic of her story. In a nation inhabited with the world's most poisonous creatures, production of antivenoms is a natural extension of CSL's public health responsibilities. And animal health becomes an added focus of the organisation, in service of Australia's heavy reliance on agriculture. With a return to war looming, scientific endeavour ignites on a number of fronts around the world. A team at Harvard deliver a breakthrough in the fractionation of plasma as a treatment for blood loss, shock and burns. It saves countless soldiers and opens up the new field of plasma protein therapies. Meanwhile, a team in Oxford make the breakthrough in production of penicillin that will realize its potential as the wonder drug of the 20th century. CSL's program takes mere months to deliver results, and soon Australia becomes the first nation to make penicillin available to her civilian population. The war period also sees the introduction of influenza virus vaccine. CSL adopts the egg-based production method and provides vaccine to Australian and British troops. With war over, a period of general prosperity begins. Improvements in diagnostic tools and scientific instruments leads to a surge in research and product development. CSL works with the Australian Red Cross and generous blood donors to deliver plasma-based therapies at no charge to patients. The scourge of polio that has crippled so many young lives is finally solved through development of a vaccine Within a decade, CSL helps to eradicate the disease in Australia with 25 million doses of vaccine administered to the public. But the times are changing. New legislation demands that CSL operate along commercial lines and highly competitive pressure by multinational pharmaceutical companies force an end to production of the polio vaccine and later penicillin and insulin. The organisation expands its range of plasma protein therapies and continues to boost its standing in the global fight against influenza. While progress is slow in some areas, in others, the future is seized with vigour. A difficult relationship with government and a scattered product development programme bring CSL to the brink of financial disaster. At its worst, she comes within one month of not being able to pay wages. Despite some significant breakthroughs for Australia, this period is notable for the organisation's diminishing position in science and medicine. And as most government-run laboratories around the world are being shut down or privatised, CSL is becoming increasingly isolated. And then, in her 75th year, after decades of threats and promises, the government takes the first real steps to setting CSL free. A visionary new leader implements a strategy of product specialization and global expansion. 
As the transformation gains momentum, the CSL Sale Act paves the way for public listing on the Australian Stock Exchange. Streamlining of the R&D efforts continues, as do foreign acquisitions, to create the scale and efficiencies to be globally competitive. The purchase of ZLB, the fifth largest manufacturer of plasma products in the world, is an audacious move for a relatively tiny company from Australia. But in time, it will prove a masterstroke. To secure supply of plasma to the growing manufacturing network, 47 US-based collection centers are bought from Navi. And the share price is riding high. But a glut in global plasma supply soon delivers a sharp reality check. It's not enough to derail the biggest play of all for Aventus Bearing, a global company three times the size of CSL with an even older heritage. It's a massive gamble, but the team make a bid and win. The purchase creates a globally integrated network of plasma collection and manufacturing with commercial reach that was unimaginable prior to public listing. The strategic reinvention of the company continues with divestment of much-loved assets, strengthening of R&D capabilities, collaboration triumphs, commercial expansion, game-changing products, global pandemic response, transformative patient experiences, and inspiring new leadership to build on this success and guide the organization into her second hundred years. Despite her achievements in combating swine flu, the economics of the global flu industry means CSL must invest, divest, or risk the slow death of that business. Once more, the team chooses growth, and with the acquisition of Novartis's flu division, CSL becomes the world's second largest flu vaccine provider. While the purchase cements flu as a strong second pillar, in 2016 it is the plasma business that dominates, accounting for 90% of revenue. In this centenary year, the launch of novel recombinant therapies for people with haemophilia heralds an exciting new era. And clinical trials on an innovative treatment for heart attack patients hold the potential to deliver CSL's next blockbuster product. A hundred years ago, CSL made a promise to save lives and protect the health of a nation. Today, that promise is stronger than ever, but her pledge now extends throughout the planet. CSL has grown into a global biotherapeutics leader with a unique combination of R&D focus, operational excellence, and commercial strength. This enables her to research, develop, and deliver innovative therapies for patients with life-threatening conditions while emerging innovations offer greater potential for improvements in health and well-being than at any other time in history. CSL's 16,000 staff in more than 30 countries have received a mighty inheritance, and it falls upon each one of them to realize the potential of their era, because their own legacy is just getting started.